Following President Biden's recent speech to a joint session of Congress, I've been asked by podcast listeners to talk about his call for free community college. So let's talk about it, coming up next. In President Biden's speech to Congress, he called for free community college, a movement that has been building for several years. Unsurprisingly, my background informs many of my views on this topic. I've been a faculty member at several different community colleges. I still teach a few courses at a community college as an adjunct. Many of my closest friends also teach at community colleges, and I was the president of a community college for nearly a decade. First, by way of background and a bit of context. I don't really like the phrase free community college because of course it's not really free in the sense that someone pays for it and yet more accurate ways of discussing it such as calling it what it is 100% taxpayer subsidized community college education can be just plain awkward. So I, I don't like the phrase free community college and I also don't like it because there really aren't any existing proposals that would make it truly free for students. In fact, some proposals are very far from free. The main reason for this is that nearly all proposals focus solely on subsidizing tuition, even though most college students face plenty of other costs when it comes to attending college besides just paying tuition. These costs include fees in the form of both general fees that all students pay and course or activity specific fees that only some students pay, like uh, for example, a specific set of materials for a lab course. Plus, don't forget the cost of books. <laughs> if you haven't priced educational textbooks in a while, you're in for some serious sticker shock. Textbooks can easily run hundreds of dollars each. Furthermore, existing proposals usually don't even consider the cost of room and board at colleges, even though the cost of residential living is high, typically equal to or in some cases even greater than the combined total cost of tuition and fees. Of course, it's easy to simply respond that community college students shouldn't be living on campus and that students should go to the community college in their local community so they can live at home to save money. Yet, while this may work for many people, maybe even most people, there are also many students that are unable to do this for a variety of reasons. For some students, who are often also the most financially vulnerable students, living at home may not be a safe or healthy option. For other students, the local community college may not be a good option simply because not all community colleges offer all curricula, and the curricula offered locally may not meet the educational needs of an individual student. For example, if you want to be, say, a veterinary technician, you may not be able to find that curriculum at your local community college even though it is available at a community college a couple of hundred miles away, say. In addition, there are other real-world cost situations that existing proposals for free community college don't take into consideration, such as, for example, parents needing to pay for childcare while in class, or students who need to scale back their work hours to attend school. Still, these are situations that apply to students in very specific cases, and in fact, the proposals for free community college would likely reduce the cost of college attendance for many students. That said, there are two policy-based concerns that cause me to be a bit wary about the concept of free community college. First, I think it sounds a lot better than it actually is, as I've already described, current proposals wouldn't actually make community college free for many students. Second, and more significant, is the fact that governmental assistance for our most financially vulnerable students already exists in the form of Pell Grants. The Pell Grant system is already designed to cover more educational expenses for needy students than most of the free community college programs that have been proposed and can even cover costs like living expenses for low-income students attending college. The Pell Grant system is a large, effective program for funding college for people who truly need that money to go to college, and a continuous expansion and improvement of that program would probably do more to help people afford college than the free community college programs that have been proposed. So while the new proposals may sound like a step forward 
and may even sound really good on their face, I'm skeptical about the practical economic value of these proposals. Even if I'm wrong, and we are able to implement a proposal for free community college that actually increases the total public financial support for higher education, I'm still concerned that providing free community college may actually worsen what I regard as the chief problem facing American higher education today, the low personal and social return on investment that comes about as a result of the ever-increasing cost of higher education. Higher education in America is runaway expensive, and while these high costs don't always manifest as a direct expense to the student, even those costs that are not passed along to the student are paid by someone. With over 6,000 higher education institutions in the United States, American higher education is a highly fragmented system that continues to spend more and more to recruit a shrinking pool of students which means more and more money that is being spent on higher education is not going toward the direct costs of providing students with an education. And make no mistake, this is not a matter of a slight financial inefficiency. The American higher education system produces real financial waste that we are only beginning to understand. The Lumina Foundation, one of the largest nonprofit foundations that deals primarily with higher education issues in the United States, has found that American higher education is spending about $50 billion a year on nothing. It gets nothing in return for the $50 billion investment of money that is spent on maintenance upkeep, utilities for empty classrooms, underutilized buildings, underenrolled academic programs underutilized employees, and debt service on shiny new facilities that fail to actually recruit additional students. The interesting thing about this waste is that it's equivalent to most of the total student loan borrowing in the United States each year. In other words, students are borrowing money to pay colleges to spend that money on things that result in zero practical educational return on investment for the student. Eliminating that waste could, in theory, eliminate most of the new student loan debt in the United States. If you're interested, I've included a link in the show notes to an interview with the CFO of Luminum that recently aired on my Mortarboard podcast, along with a link to the Foundation's study on the true cost of overcapacity in American colleges. Of course, with any industry with 6,000 competitors, some are more efficient than others. In fact, it varies widely. Many community colleges have a truly lean operating structure. Many universities do as well. My own institution, Indiana State University, has a relatively low operating expense structure and offers the highest social mobility of any school in the state. The return on investment to students is high. But with thousands of schools, many are bloated and inefficient. And the available data shows this beyond all argument. The truth is that higher education is already a heavy, uh, sorry, a very heavily subsidized business. It's subsidized by taxpayers, donors, and lenders. While adding an additional subsidy would certainly show further support for education, and I don't deny for a minute the desirability of increased support for education, the sad truth is that there has never been an efficient, heavily subsidized system that became more efficient by increasing its subsidy. A am I obsessed with efficiency because I'm all about the money? No, I'm interested in efficiency because at the end of the day, the poor return on American investment in higher education has yielded a system that is viewed with skepticism by students, by the public, by politicians, and even by people who work within higher education, who too often see inexplicably wasteful practices or poor results around them. Finally, I'll say this. If there is a discernible financial movement among the system of community colleges, it is the transfer of financial share from the public to students. Some community colleges are state-supported, some are locally supported, some are both. But accounting for inflation, public support for higher education 
including community college education, has decreased. With costs increasing faster than inflation, costs have been transferred to students, particularly in the community college space, where donors make up proportionately less of the non-student subsidy. Riddle me this. Would we be as focused on decreasing the cost for students if the cost for students hadn't risen so fast and so far? Ultimately, I think the focus on decreasing student cost is a reaction to the increase in cost that students have faced over the last decade or two. Put another way, perhaps we wouldn't see a free community college education as so necessary if community colleges were properly financially supported in the first place. The cost pendulum has swung toward students for some time, but pendulums swing both ways, and that's what we're seeing here, I think. If you agree, you know what to do. Now's the time to hit the like and subscribe button below, as well as that alert bell so you'll be notified of new material when it's available. Thanks. Ultimately, I believe that increased public financial support of higher education needs to be coupled with efforts to improve outcomes in higher education, because only then will increasing public financial support be sustainable. The creation of an unsustainable system to provide a kind of pseudo-free community college is just breaking a promise to the public, and we can do better than that. I've really enjoyed talking with you today. You can comment below if you have an opinion to share. I hope you're well, and I look forward to talking with you in my next video.